How's it going everyone? My name is Mulder and welcome to GameCron, your number one stop for tips and tricks on your favorite video games. Today is Star Wars Squadron's Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 4. This is one I'm sure you've all been waiting for, which is where we take a look at the TIE IN Interceptor and the RZ-1 A-Wing. I'll go over what ship components I'm currently running with both these starfighters and how best to use them on the battlefield. All that and more straight ahead. If you enjoy this video or the series, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. I got more videos planned for Star Wars Squadrons, but for right now, Let's take a dive into our Star Wars Squadron's tips video on the interceptors for both the Rebels and the Empire. Let's start things off with the TIE Interceptor first. I have a max hull of 697.5, which is low. Max speed is at 170, which is normal. Max acceleration, which is at 512, which is high. Maneuverability is at 76.5, which is low. My primary weapon is the Rapid Fire Cannon. My left auxiliary is either the Repair System or sometimes I'll use the Anti-Starfighter Missile. Right auxiliary is the Seeker Mine. Countermeasures is the Chaff Particles. Hull is the Dampener Hull. And the engine is the Propulsion Engine. Now the Rapid Fire Cannon is one of my favorite weapons to use in this game so far, second only to the guided cannon that's on my TIE Bomber. The rapid fire cannon can shred almost any aircraft if you're able to get close enough to them between medium to close range. Any enemy aircraft that's at 700 yards away or more, the lasers will not hit their target. But thanks to the propulsion engine, I'm able to catch up to any enemy starfire that's trying to escape me and tear them to shreds with my rapid fire cannon. Now because my TIE interceptor has low health, I do tend to have the repair system equipped more than I do have the anti-starfire missile. The times I recommend having the anti-starfire missile is when one of your teams teammates is running support with the TIE Reaper to keep you well supplied and health. But the right auxiliary seeker mine is definitely choice to have for the Starfighter, because it comes in handy in two different scenarios. The first is that because I have high acceleration, I'm able to go into enemy dogfights and get out of them pretty quickly to where I can drop my seeker mine in the middle of chaos. I've gotten between 3 to 5 kills simply by dropping my seeker mine in the midst of dogfights and just wiping out my enemies as they're busy trying to fight my allies. But the other great thing about the seeker mine is that if you're up against an enemy A-Wing that won't get off your tail, dropping the seeker mine behind you and then turning Turning around rapidly and then shooting back at them will get them disoriented, in which case the Seeker Mine will finish them off. As always, the Chaff Particles are great for knocking out enemy missiles, but more importantly other Seeker Mines that players are using. I really love the Dampener Hull for my Interceptor because it makes enemies take a lot longer to lock onto me. Not to mention the fact that any tractor beams or guided missiles can't lock onto my Interceptor because I have this hull equipped. Which basically means that the only way enemies can shoot you down is either with unguided missiles or simply just blasting at you if you stay in their line of sight. Which again, thanks to the Propulsion Engine, it allows you to outmaneuver your opponents in the air pretty quickly. Overall, I love this TIE Interceptor build, especially when I'm playing with my friends and we're all running the right aircraft along with support. I've gotten over between 6 to 8 to 10 kills with low deaths thanks to this build, so definitely give it a shot if you're a big fan of the TIE Interceptor. Next up is the RZ-1 A-Wing, which has a max hull of 450, which is low. Max shield is at 500, which is normal. Max speed is at 112, which is low. Max acceleration is at 137.2, which is also low. But the maneuverability is at 104, which is high. My primary weapon is the rapid fire cannon. Left auxiliary is the repair kit. Right auxiliary is the cluster missile. Countermeasures is the seeker warheads. Or sometimes I use the sensor inverter, which sends enemy missiles back to their owners. Hull is dampener hull. Shields are overloaded shield. And my engine is the micro thrust engine. Now my A-Wing is strictly a hit and run fighter. My rapid fire cannon does devastating damage the same as the Interceptor's one at close to medium range. Anything further out from 700 yards, you're not going to be able to hit them, but that's when your cluster missile comes in handy. I do tend to use my cluster missiles to finish off any enemies that are trying to accelerate away from me to where my rapid fire cannon can't reach them. And because this thing shoots three missiles at once, it's great to finish off any lingering targets. The dampener hull of course makes it harder for enemies to lock onto me along with enemy missiles and tractor beams not able to work on me, but the overloaded shield is perfect for this aircraft. The reason why because it gives you a powerful shield that takes a lot of damage before it gets disabled. Bear in mind though that it does take a long time to recharge, so make sure that someone on your team can give you either a supply droid or fly off to pick up the health that's lingering around on the field. Because my rapid fire cannon and cluster missile does such heavy damage, it's also great to have the micro thrust engine to where you can keep on the tail of any enemy aircraft, especially enemy TIE interceptors. One thing I will say though is that the sensor inverter which sends enemy missiles back to their owners does work well depending upon who you're fighting against. Pro pilots will always wait to the last minute to launch their missiles 
missile to where you won't even be able to activate your countermeasure in time. But if you're up against decent to new players, they'll launch their missiles from a distance to where you can then send them back to them without a problem. I do find myself switching this out with the repair system because my aircraft has such low health. But again, if someone on your team is running support with a U-Wing, you should be able to use your inverter without a problem. I do enjoy both these interceptor builds because they allow me to go in, do heavy damage, and get out of danger before things get too heavy. Again, if you like the way this build is, but you want to make some improvements or add some things in that you like to use, definitely give it a try. I would also love to know what you're currently running for your TIE Interceptor and A-Wing Interceptor, so drop a comment below. And that's it for our Star Wars Squadrons Tips and Tricks video part 4. I'll be dropping quite a few more Star Wars Squadrons video, including one focusing on fleet battles very soon. So I hope you stick around. I'm having a blast covering Star Wars Squadrons, but we also have Watch Dogs Legion, Cyberpunk 2077, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry 6 coming up soon, which I'll be doing tips and tricks videos on those games right when they come out. So don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned. I cannot wait to dive into those games with you, but until then, I'm Mulder, and I'll see you very soon in the Game Cron. Pleasure here.